Welcome to this Godot and Redo tutorial. Today we will spawn some enemies into our scenes. We create an enemy scene with a simple movement and a simple health bar and we set up a spawner node that will create an enemy every few seconds. Now let's not waste time and let's dig into it. First I'm going to my root scene tree and I'm going to add a new node. This node is going to be a node to D and I call this node to D my spawner. Then to the spawner I will add a timer and I will already set up my timer to be automatically starting and restarting every two seconds. And that's already what we're going to do for now with the spawner node. Let's move into creating an enemy. For that I create a new scene and I will pick a character body 2D for this node and I call it enemy. To this enemy I will attach a collision shape. I will give it a sprite 2D as well and I will give it a progress bar as a health bar. I will already rename the progress bar to health bar. Now let's zoom a little bit in on our champion here. The shape I will give him a simple circular shape. I estimate the size and for the sprite I will give it this texture here. I will go into the texture property in our scene inspector and on the filter I will give it the nearest so that it looks more pixely and a little bit more crisp. Though it still looks horrendous. For the texture bar I drag it down a little bit and in the inspector I will say I will turn percentage off. I press Q and drag it out a little bit, make it a little bit smaller. And then we have a max value of 100, so I also set the value of to 100 to be at full health. I go down a little bit into theme overrides. I go into styles and here where it says fill I press on empty and select a new style box flat click on it again to open it and I can select the color for my health bar. And that's already it what we're going to do about cosmetics with our player. The next thing I want to do is attach a script to our enemy. But before we do that, let's save our enemy scene into our scenes folder. I call it enemy and I save it. Now let's add a script and select our scripts folder to add the enemy script there. It doesn't really matter where you save it for this little project, but it's always nice to keep things tidy. Now, in my enemy script, the first thing I will do is I declare two export variables. The first is going to be speed of type integer and I auto set it to 50. The second export variable is going to be our health, also of type int, and I set it to 5, just like we did put the value of our health bar to 5 previously. Sorry, to 100 I think it was. Then I will also add a little bit of fun here. I call another variable, I call it alt texture and that is going to be a preload and here I give it a different texture that I have in my file system. Now when we call now our first function which is going to be the ready function what I want to do is create a new random variable which will get a random number between 0 and 6 and I will just check if the random number is smaller or equal to 3 then we will change the texture of our spirit of our character I will select my sprite 2d dot texture and I will give it my alternate texture that I loaded previously up here. Now this is just for the funds. This has no impact on our spawner whatsoever. Then what we will do is create a simple movement for our enemy. So let's call a function called physics process delta. Now in this, func in this physics function what I will do is I will take the velocity of my player 
and take the x-axis, only the x-velocity, and set it to minus my speed, so to minus whatever we set the speed to. Then we call move and slide. So what this does is that we're going to move on the x-axis to the left because we subtract speed. So this is a very simple movement. Now we just have to instantiate this enemy so that it can move anywhere. Let's go for this back into our main scene. We have created a spawner. Let's move it around a little bit so that we have it on the right edge of our, cam of our screen. Since we are going to move left, I wanted to have it as right as possible. Then I will add a script to the spawner as well. Call it spawner and I save it into my scripts folder. And in here, the first thing that we will do is another export variable, which is going to be our enemy scene. And that is of type packed scene this time, because everything that we have down here as saved scenes inside our folder system or file system are indeed packed scenes. Now you can see that on the right side in the scene uh, on the right side in the inspector we have created a new field enemy scene. This is what an export variable does. It gives us this little new field where we now can take our enemy scene from our scenes folder and we can drag it into this little field. With this he knows about our enemy scene. You could also click on it and say load and now you can find it in your folder structure. If we go into scenes and enemy it does exactly the same. Then as for our logic in the spawner we will take our timer node, we will go to the signals that this timer has and we will use the timeout function, sorry, and we will use the timeout signal and connect it to our spawner node. Whenever this signal is called, what we want to do is to create a new enemy. So I will create a new variable called enemy and this is going to be an enemy scene and we will call the word instantiate on it. What this creates is a new enemy scene that we store into this variable. For our new created enemy, we want it to be positioned exactly where our node to D is positioned and that he starts off from there. So we do that by telling him that our enemy.position is going to be the same as the position of this spawner. All that's left to do now is to call get parent. With this we access the main node because we get one above our spawner which is our main node, main scene. And then we say dot add child. And what we will do is add this new enemy as a child to our scene tree. If we don't do this step, the scene does exist somewhere, but you cannot see it inside of our game. So without this step here, you can instantiate as many nodes as you want, they will never show up in your game. Having done all this, we should be able to already run our game and see some enemy spawn. Perfect! And we have a working enemy spawner. It will spawn enemies for you endlessly now. We will use this spawner for the next video where we will create an auto-targeting system that will target the enemies based on whether they are close or far away, maybe just a random enemy or perhaps the one with the lowest or the highest health bars.